This is the Catholic Daily Journal for Saturday, June the 1st, 2019. June has traditionally been the month for devotions in honor of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Each of the months of the year has a traditional devotion attached to it. March is St. Joseph, October is the Holy Rosary, and June is the Sacred Heart of Jesus. In 1873, Pope Pius IX attached a series of indulgences to devotions to the Sacred Heart. And the Sacred Heart is fundamentally about the humanity of Jesus and his wounds. It has three big symbols, the crown of thorns, the piercing made by the spear, and fire. Devotions to the Sacred Heart usually take place on first Fridays, but there are plenty of prayers, novenas, litanies, and meditations that can be used at any time, and which are especially apropos throughout this month of June. Today is the Feast of St. Justin Martyr. St. Justin was born around A.D. 100 in the newly detemplized Israeli desert, but his parents weren't Jews. They likely moved there from another part of the Roman Empire. Justin was smart and trained in both Christian and pagan philosophy. He wrote a lot, and much of what we know about the growth of the Christian faith after the death of St. John the Apostle comes from Justin. His big contribution to us nowadays is in the details of that era that he gives us. For example, he lets us know that the mass of that era was shockingly similar to our own. He tells us about house churches, which are shockingly similar in architecture to the churches built in the U.S. in the 1850s and 60s. He tells us about the way the church functioned and operated in that time between the first generation of apostles and the legalization of Christianity in the late 4th century. Most of the authors of that era are spiritually valuable, but the writings are almost always accounts of martyrdoms rather than detail-rich accounts of daily life. Today in 1495, a monk named John Cor, C-O-R, who was an apothecary for King James IV and a monk of the Linderas Abbey in Fife in southern Scotland, was given royal approbation to make aqua vitae with eight balls of malt. And so we have the first mention in world history of Scotch whiskey. That's whiskey without the letter E. W-H-I-S-K-Y. It has the Latin name aqua vitae, water of life. Scotch whiskey is just distilled beer. To make whiskey, the brewer malts whole grains with sugar and yeast and ferments the whole thing until the yeast has done its work. And then rather than bottling and conditioning, which would create carbonated beer, the brewer boils the mixture and collects the steam, which is mostly pure alcohol. And depending on the kind of fuel that he uses to heat the raw beer, he can infuse some flavor into the alcohol. And that's what makes scotch from the Scottish Islay Islands taste a little like peat moss. The biggest part of the equation, though, is the barrel. Scotch whiskey comes into this world clear and largely tasteless. It's not that different from vodka, which is made in the same basic way except with potato instead of grains. The distinctive Scotch whiskey color and flavor come from years of direct contact with the wood of the barrels in which the liquor is aged. These barrels are burned in to damage the wood and expose the various chemicals in it so that the aging can happen more efficiently. Beer and Scotch whiskey are both practical drinks. Beer has been used since the time of the Egyptian pharaohs to preserve the nutrition of grains and basically put bread in a bottle. Whiskey has been used since the beginning as a nerve tonic, an antiseptic, and a sleeping aid. And my special thanks to Brother John Corr for his excellent contribution to world history and to the fine men at Lafroig and the Ardbeg for bringing that art to its height. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. And until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.